Good afternoon everyone uh, and welcome to uh, an Inkscape tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be creating the European Union flag as uh, you can see there. Um, so let's get started. So first let's create just a new one, a new Inkscape document. And I'll just close this one here. And so the first thing we want to do is, at the moment, it's in a uh, portrait orientation. So we want to change it to a landscape orientation. And for this tutorial, I'm not going to use the recommended dimensions or the accurate dimensions, I guess you could call it, of the flag. Instead, I'll be making it a HD size wallpaper. Um, because later uh, I might make a tutorial where we can add some effects to it to make it look more wallpaper like um, using uh, GIMP uh, but you can use Photoshop if you'd like to as well after this tutorial to uh, add extra things I'll show you some examples at the end of this tutorial so now that we've got our dimensions set to a HD size and it's uh, in landscape orientation. Uh, let's create um, a rectangle. So it goes rectangles and squares, and that's F4 on your keyboards. Uh, and so, uh, before we do this, sorry, uh, first make it so that you can snap to the page border. So there you go, snap to, just drag it out. And there you go. Now we might want to edit the color. I think it's got the color right this time. Um, but yeah, we don't want any stroke on it. And the fill, I basically got the colors here. The blue background is this value. So we'll just change it here. And so it's about, I think it's. Yeah, 0, 51, and 153. And obviously the opacity is set to 255. Um, so it's not transparent at all. So now that we've got that, next thing we want to do is create a star. So go to here, which is I think the asterisk button on your keyboard. And so we'll create a star instead of a uh, polygon. Um, and we'll use five corners. Uh, spoke ratio 0.4 is about accurate, but I think if you want it really accurate from memory, it's about 382. And the rounded and randomized are both set to zero. Um, otherwise, it'll look a bit weird. And so what we'll do is, so first we'll change the color. Let's just set to yellow for now. It's not the most accurate color. Hold down control now once you're dragging it out to lock it kind of like that. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll click here. So click the arrow up here, the cursor, which is H on your keyboards. Oh no, sorry, not H, F1, sorry. So F1. Click again, and then you can actually edit the point here. We'll make it um, snap to the center of objects. So, zoom in a bit. And there we go. Now, hopefully, this will rotate a bit better. If it doesn't, it's not really rotating nicely for us. Ah, and there we go. So now it's rotating. Okay, there we go. We've got the got it nicely rotated. Uh, we're going to change the color because it's not exactly accurate. So we set it to for the gold star. We set it to this value or two fifty five two four zero for RGB. But this is the hexadecimal value for RGB. Um, 
if that doesn't make sense, that's fine. You don't have to know what that means. All it is is basically it's like color value. It kind of makes a gold yellowy color. Um, and so the next step we do is we will put these two aligns. So hold down shift and you got, as we can see, we've got them both selected. Zoom out, so control mouse wheel I usually use, but you can also do um, you can also do plus or minus on your keyboard to zoom in and out. So I'll just do, uh, select them all by control A. And uh, we'll go to objects, align distribute just to center them and center vertically. We don't have to center vertically, actually, I might center this one at the bottom. And that, that, that's fine for now. I'll move it up and fix it later um, once we've got our other gold stars here. So the next step we want to do is create a clone. So create a, cl a cl tiles clone. Sorry. Um, and the rows is just going to be one. And we have 12 columns. Uh, shift, that's fine. We can, I think we exclude that tile there from memory. The width of the tile, yeah. Uh, scale, just accumulate, that's fine, I think, for memory. Um, and for the rotation, we set to 30 degrees. So here, for the column, not the row, we keep that as uh, zero. Um, so for the column, we make it 30 degrees, and then we just, uh, I think everything else is just default. So we'll hit create, uh, that's right, and that won't work because we've set the center of our object um, there. So what we want to do is put it in the middle, so let's put it about there. And I might just move this up. And holding control that will work nicely and so when we click create this time it creates what we want which is good and we can um we can scale this later too um if we're not as you can see it's a little bit too big for our image because uh, we don't want it right to the edge even if you moved it it would still be too close to the edge um so but as you can see, the other problem with it is that it hasn't created the European star. If we go, if we have a look at the original European, if you have, remember the Europe, original European star I showed in the start of the video, um, all these uh, basically stars uh, were all, uh, weren't, they didn't rotate around around like this, so we've got to make sure that they're all straight, I guess you could say. So we'll just click twice and then move this to the center. We do this for all of them, unfortunately. It's a bit time consuming. But it's a bit iffy too. So zooming out. Just close that too so you can see better. So drag these handles so it rotates perfectly in the middle. Because if we do rotate it otherwise, it'll just, um, I'll show you what happens. So if we go transform and rotate it, so 5 degrees, we expect to rotate it, we expect it to rotate around here, but because it's set there, it'll actually rotate it, its position um, uh, in the circle, I guess you could say, it, <laughs> rather than um, rotating in its current spot, and we want it to rotate it in its current location. It's a bit hard to explain. I'm not sure the correct words, so hopefully that 
makes sense. If not, just do what I'm doing and um, it'll all make sense once we're finished. If not, leave a comments and uh, I'll help answer. Sometimes the it does require a bit of like scrolling or zooming in and out again. Next step, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll have to use the transform tool to rotate it. Um, and as you can see, each of them are rotated a bit differently. So we'll have to use different values for each individual star. But fortunately I've worked out the, the rotations. I'm not sure. It, to me it looks like it's visually correct, but it might not be completely accurate. But it's good enough for creating the effects we want. So for the first one, it's pretty simple to um, fix. It's just a flip. So to flip the selected objects vertically, just hit V. Uh, it's simple. And this one's a bit more trickier. So we, we, we're going to start at the top and work our way down. Um, and I've actually saved the values. So six degrees for the first one. I can't remember if it's plus or minus. It's basically the opposite. So if it's positive here, it'll be negative here. If it's negative here, it'll be positive there. So they kind of switch around. Um, so this will be six. I think it's negative. If it's not negative, it'll be positive. So yeah, that's negative. The next one we have here is uh, 24, and then 18, and then 12. So. So here we'll give it 24. Sorry, what am I doing? It didn't work. I hit clear. Sorry. Um. So yeah, 24, then 18. So minus 18 for this one because it's kind of swaps around too, like like on the opposite side suits. It's all. And that's negative. This will be positive. This will be negative. 12. And then that'll be 18 positive. Negative 24. And then positive 6 degrees. So as you can see, we've kind of got the effects we want now. It's not um, it's all horizontally kind of positioned, which is quite nice. Um, so we'll group these now. So control G on your keyboards, or uh, alternatively, you can group it this way. So there you go. Uh, and now we'll select uh, both elements, and we'll close this, and we'll go to align and distribute. If you've closed that window. Just go down to here, uh, shift control A, and then go vertically, we'll center and also horizontally center them. And then we can move this down and since it should snap, but it's not working. I'll just I'll just group them for now. So control G on your keyboards or uh, objects and then group. Sorry to repeat myself. Just 
particularly if you know all the shortcut, shortcuts in Inkscape already, and it's a bit repetitive. So now, to ungroup them to the opposite, control, uh, shifts, control A, uh, G, sorry, not A, um, and then we'll select this one, ungroup them again, like we did, and we'll select them all, and then holding down control and shift, control scales it proportionally, otherwise you get that, and shift centers it, but we also want to control it so it's all uh, in proportion. So we'll just resize it to about there. Uh, it's not exactly accurate to the specification, but it's, uh, it's pretty close to how it looks. As you'd know, the flag doesn't go this wide. It's usually a bit narrower, I guess you could say. It's not so wide. Um, and so yeah, that's it. That's basically the European Union flag. And if you want to see what you can do with it, this is a previous example. I kind of used different colors for it, but I ended up opening it up in uh, GIMP and applying some filters and I ended up creating like this grunge kind of effect. I'm not sure if you call it grunge or but yeah it's it's interesting anyway and I might show you how to create some of those effects. It's a bit hard to replicate that one. Um but yeah as you can see we could turn this into something that looks a bit more appropriate for a desktop screen. And so instead of this image here I could replace it with uh something like that. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, hope to see you next time. Bye.